we've been in the business 20 years. And uh, I think for some of you who have been regular attendees of our conferences, we have been very blessed with being able to attract the top talent in the Hispanic marketing industry. And that's wonderful news. But here's the exciting part of that, that Hispanic marketing is relatively new. Hispanic advertising, this isn't something that was done 100 years ago. This wasn't done 75 years ago. This is new. This was late 70s, the 80s. That's when you saw agencies start up. That's when you saw corporations, and specifically, as uh, Rico was pointing out in the maps, Texas, California, you know, these large demographic states where Latinos, where you could, you could make a case study about why you should be spending the marketing dollars there. And um, when we first got the idea to start the marketing conferences, uh, I've been blessed to have been a part of the uh, U.S. Hispanic Chamber of Commerce Board uh, that started in, in the mid-'80s. And um, I got a chance to go around the country, to to San Antonio, to the New Yorks, Miamis, and witnessing not only the population growth, the buying power growth, but also witnessing what corporations were interested. And at the time, it was Philip Morris, it was Miller's Brewing, it was Coors, it was a lot of, a lot of the, you know, if you will, liquor industry, the tobacco industry, and, and, then, and then Procter & Gamble entered, which really gave, I think, a, a, lot, a lot of other corporations the idea, this is a good way to go. And uh, I got to meet a lot of important people that made, made the way, paved the way, rather, for Hispanic marketing. And uh, uh, 20 years ago now, I uh, asked uh, two of our special uh, guest speakers, uh, you would not know their name, but they are the icons of the business, uh, Hector Orsi and, and Felipe Corzani. They were in town to present. I said, well, I have an idea here. Why don't we create a Hispanic marketing award here that we would present at our conferences every year? And this gives us some visibility, because uh, you know, doing a marketing conference in the Midwest, you know, we weren't on the map, to be honest with you. And, uh, and so that, that, that would put us on the map. And also, we could bring visibility to our, to our corporations and our sponsors. And they said, well, it's a good idea, Rick. I said, well, I, I thought we'd start up by honoring you, you two. And they said, well, we love it. Hector was the agency side with this, and Felipe is the research person. And that was the beginning of these awards. And, and uh, Hector became a member of the selection committee. So, so in retrospect, this award selection committee is made up of the top industry leaders who will, who will go down in history as the founders of Hispanic marketing. So I'm going to start uh, our first award is for research. And I specifically, uh, when, when I thought of, of presenting these awards, you normally go to the agency side. You know, there's more glamour, they're visible, they're, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're at all the shows, they're at all the conferences, and then the research guys at home plugging away, right, Al, and they're, you're doing your homework, and nobody ever talks about them, and you know, the research guys, who cares? But, but Felipe Corzani was a difference maker, intelligent, articulate, charismatic, and so I said, we're going to do a Hispanic Marketing Research Achievement Award. So uh, our recipient is someone who has, has given, given back to research, if you will, have, has been a person who develops disciplines 
into business. And uh, I, I, I allowed, I, I made a good decision when I gave these recipients the chance to be on a selection committee. They chose the recipient, I didn't. They were the ones that I would call every, to action every year, say, who is our, who should be our award recipient? And um, I think that really made a difference to the recipient, of course. His counterparts, his, his collaborators, his, in a lot of ways, uh, the people that they look up to now decide who the recipient is. So this year, uh, our recipient is uh, Alvaro Ricardo Barasa. And, <laughs> and uh, you just witnessed why he is, he's worthy of the award. But not only that, but uh, the fact that it, these, are, these aren't lifetime achievement awards. These are awards to people who are still active. These are, these are awards to uh, hopefully boost their morale, especially in research, to want to do more, to want to uh, continue to uh, develop new methods of marketing. Because Hispanic marketing is not going away. I think there was, attempt, there was an attempt to do away with Hispanic marketing. Larger general market agencies would purchase Hispanic agencies. The money was always, was always a difference to some of the agency owners on the Latino side. And then they disappear. They disappeared. And, and uh, these large general market agencies says, oh, we, we have Hispanic covered because they were threatened. Because their, their clients were saying, where's our Hispanic marketing? Our, you're not talking to us about that market. We just saw that their buying power is 100 or $300 billion. And now, when we started, it was $300 billion back in 1997, when we did our first conference here. It's, it's $2.4 trillion. That's the message. So, Al, uh, if, you, if you come up here, please. And, um, yeah. And then, and then Al, I want to have just a, a, a brief conversation here. I mean, you know the names of, uh, of the people on the selection committee. I mean, what, what's your thoughts as your, the recipient this year? Thank you, first of all. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, uh, it was an honor to be uh, selected uh, by the, by the, the committee. Um, folks like uh, Felipe Corzeni and uh, the gentleman from ISA and a lot of the other folks that I've known over many years, um, uh, those were uh, groundbreaking individuals who really changed the industry who changed not only the market research industry, Hispanic market research industry, but also the Hispanic market. Uh, folks like Isabel Valdez and Felipe and, and many others. Uh, so it's, a, it's an honor. So thank you very much. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, if, if you look at your experience, I know that, mm -hmm. that one, of, one of the highlights that I thought of was your important work with Allstate. <laughs> uh, groundbreaking work. And, and your and your your uh, collaboration with Ray Salea. Talk to us a little about because that was ground bacon at the time. Uh, absolutely, yeah, um, yeah. We uh, I think uh, one of my key takeaways from that from that work is uh, measure, 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 um, because a lot of organizations are always challenged with demonstrating the value of a Hispanic initiative, a multicultural initiative. And uh, so some of the groundbreaking work that we did there was to institutionalize measurements across the board, whether it's measuring your book of business or measuring brand awareness or measuring how many people are calling in uh, and working with Ray and his team uh, and others at, at our research group, uh, building those foundational measurement tools were, were critical. Uh, we measured uh, Custom, uh, the Allstate customer book of business using, at that point in time, the Hispanic surname. And um, those, those measurements were shared with the CEO, with the controllers. And gosh, I would say those are things that you really need to institutionalize. 
And so that those are some takeaways. Yeah. From, yeah. Well, you know, I, Maria, as as we look at the, or Al rather, as we, as we look at the the importance of your work, we have to. I think um, one of the reasons we instituted the Hispanic marketing conference here in the cities because we wanted our business community to look upon the Latinos as consumers, not just as immigrants, not just as dual arrivals, as consumers. And once they did, it changed it, it changed the whole dynamic of how they would reach reach the Latino community. But in order to do that, you needed information. Yep. You needed surveys, you needed the work that you do. So how do you uh, now with your with your uh, with your group, uh, Preference Analytics, how do you plan to move forward? Because as you, as you mentioned, these numbers are dynamic, they're changing. Mm -hmm. And what, is, what do you think your next five years look like, Al? And, and well, you can use your AI to go for that. You can ask them, <laughs> they'll tell you. No, well, what do you think? Yeah. No, I mean, just as a, as a professional, yeah. and now as a, uh, uh, a member of the selection committee, if yeah. you will, oh, but what you. Do you, how do you see your role, Al? Oh gosh, I, I would. I see. Uh, I see the market research industry evolving specifically in a Hispanic market area, Hispanic marketing area to encompass a lot of the the disciplines, including Gen AI, uh, and encompassing those and taking them forward into the organization. So what I'm talking about here is using g generative AIs, using predictive analytics, using um, choice analysis, which I didn't get a chance to talk to today. Using these leading techniques come to the table in your respective organizations or companies. Uh, and that's where I see, I, I want to be able to help those organizations. But I think anybody here can use those, those tools to help convince or demonstrate success in the Hispanic market. Excellent. Yeah. Well, uh, Rico, if you will, let's get a photo. Uh, and we'll present Ray with, uh, with Al, rather, with the, or over here, we'll get over here. Okay. Well, thank you. And uh, you know, our next award, of course, we, we had talked about the agency award. And um, a lot of the names, if you will, on that are just amazing people. We've had them all here. And um, when we invited them to Minnesota uh, to start off our first conference, you know, um, lo and behold, they wanted to come to Minnesota. You know, we are known as the headquarters of some of the top advertising agencies in the country. But none of these agencies ever come to these conferences. In the 28 years I've been in the business, they do not come to these conferences. We invite them. Why? Why wouldn't they want to come and learn? Because they don't know the marketplace. And maybe they're not interested. And, and, and so, we would, we would have someone, someone that would travel to Miami, we would have their presenter here. And they were always great audiences. These were audiences who, uh, who I would explain, they want, they want to buy Hispanic marketing. They want to buy it. They want to learn from it. They want to be involved with it. So um, we've had some of the greatest. And they were all accessible people, by the way, every one of them. And so today, we're, we're honored to um, add another person to the list. Uh, and I brought along this poster from 2000, uh, this is from 2008, which seems like a lifetime ago, but our, our uh, recipient was here for our conference then. And uh, she had uh, started her own agency in Chicago, uh, was doing some amazing work. And um, we met. She was here. She did a dynamic presentation. Uh, we kind of lost contact here and there. But um, I was so pleased when one of our uh, selection committee, George San Jose, the San Jose agency, nominated 
Larissa Lopez as our next recipient. And um, I was pleased because a lot of times uh, Larissa and Lopez and a lot of just talented professionals, you know, they, they don't get the visibility they should get because she has been in the business for years. She's been a leader in the Chicago area, has done a lot of international work. And I, I felt that um, in the next, uh, I'm not long, I don't know how long I'm going to be in the business, but in our next round of selections, that we'll be looking at some of the, new, the newbies in the business. Because our selection committee um, contains again, a lot of the icons, but the, they're starting to retire. Uh, several of them, I'd say one third of them are retired now. So this is an honor to bring in uh, Larissa Lopez. And uh, she, she brings over 25 years of, of advertising experience and uh, leadership and has, has been a winner of many, many awards in the Chicago area. And uh, I've always felt that uh, there's so much talent here, but a lot of, of when you talk about have Hispanic advertising, you never really look at Chicago. It's always the LAs and the New Yorks. And so I'm, I'm hoping that uh, with this award, Louisa, it's, it's another chance for us to bring in the Windy City and hopefully we'll have you here to present one time. So I, I'm very pleased to uh, present this award, the Hispanic Marketing Achievement Award in recognition of your standing leadership and the development of Hispanic marketing industry in the United States. And I think we have a video. I'm Larissa Lopez, the founder and CEO of Purple Group, a purpose-driven impact agency that I established in 2001. I believe that the Hispanic Marketing Achievement Award is important because it recognizes the importance of the work that we do in this industry. And specifically, it shines a light on what I consider to be the pioneers of the industry. San Jose Group, Lopez Negrete Communications, Casanova Pendrin, De Aposito and Partners, among others. These agencies have paved the way for our industry. I thank them for their legacy, and for enabling me to stand on the shoulders of giants. In regards to receiving this award, I feel deeply honored to have been selected to be nominated by my peers. This is a prestigious award, and I consider it to be one of the most meaningful in my career. I mean, you can imagine your own peers selecting you and recognizing for your work. I am deeply touched and honored. I also want to thank Rick Aguilar from Aguilar Productions. He has created this platform that uplifts the legacy of our work and the Hispanic marketing industry. This is also very vital and important work. Thank you, Rick. We appreciate all your hard work in creating this platform for us. Well, Luisa, why don't you come? Luisa Lopez, ladies and gentlemen. Luisa Lopez. Thank you, Luisa. And Emma. Well, thanks. I, I, I know we're huggers. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. I, I, uh, I wanted to bring along this poster kind of was a reminder of uh, you know our, yeah. our our connecting back back then but i you know I, it I, also I, makes me sound younger which well, is nice <laughs> but i was i was you know always struck with, uh, with with when when you gave your presentations i do remember these presentations by the way i was struck with your energy and the and you know your excitement for what you were doing and here we are uh, years later now so your organization now does a lot of work with with, uh, I think, social-minded organizations, if you will. Yeah, we consider ourselves more of a social impact, a yeah. purpose marketing yeah. agency. Yeah, because yeah. The, the reason I, 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 I say that is because uh, in our industry here and what we've done, a, a lot of these corporations now have their own in-house marketing teams. They don't come to these conferences anymore. So we're, we're looking at new organizations like the Art Partnerships 
and, and uh, I think our, EG, our ERG group starting up. We're looking at new, organiz new, uh, new marketers who want to learn about the Hispanic market, and how are you having success with, with, with the social-minded uh, we, you know, we're having, I come from corporate, right? Like 17 years in corporate, CMO, really looking at uh, segment marketing, all of those elements. And when I went on my own, I re-explored the Latino market, right? Because right? it's a smaller startup business, you got to find a niche. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you mm -hmm. can't really compete. So I did that whole evaluation of the markets and then decided, you know what? I'm going to go back to my roots, which is Hispanic marketing. And so I established Purple Group in 2001 as a consulting firm really looking to help companies look at that. So I went back to, to the traditional from a perspective of selling insurance and financial services and all of that. And over time, I just wanted to do more meaningful work. Not that that's not meaningful, that's important, it's needed. Um, but I really wanted to do things that I felt would uplift and more directly impact our communities, but also working with large corporations who also wanted to do that, and they just tr were kind of trying to figure out exactly how do I do that? How do I offer my service and product, which is very beneficial to everyone and to the Latino community, but then how do I do it in a way that is positive, uh, regenerates, and actually allows for growth? So now, um, 23 years later, the bulk of our work is actually, for example, we did a, a campaign for tobacco. Tobacco has gone aggressively again after the Latino and African American teens. So we created this campaign with the Chicago Department of Public Health that basically played on the idea, very more behavioral and psychological as a lot of the work that we do because we're trying to change perspectives. We're trying to bring different ways to people to change their minds about things or to do things differently. So it. I, I find it is more challenging having done both sides, but it's also a lot more fun for me, yeah. uh, and I think in our team. And there we went with the idea that it was tobacco disguised as candy. And we had these visuals of actual you know, ice cream with smoke coming out of it, so that the teens could look at that, because when we did the focus groups, research, right, you need to do the research, the teens were saying, that's not smoking. My parents smoke. You know, they're the ones with the cigarettes or the ones with that. We don't smoke. We just use this little thing, that vaping thing doesn't even have nicotine. We were like, <laughs> what? So we created that, and that actually was a, had phenomenal impact. The Chicago Department of Public Health talked about how their website had so many people going in there to get quitting assistance or to be referred to other places. So that is what I call meaningful, right? So that's a lot of that work that we are doing, and that's just one example. Well, you know what I, what I asked uh, Al on his award? Um, I think the same to you. You, you know the list of, uh, of the selection committee members. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I remember um, giving you the news that you were nominated. Yeah. And, and so you know, give us your perspective a beat a recipient from, from this, this yeah. uh, um, great group of Yeah, uh, you know, from, we are an award-winning agency, right? So sometimes it's kind of like, um, I don't want to diminish it, so this is my own personal thought of it. It's a little bit of like a beauty pageant, right? You kind of put your stuff in there, and they kind of select you, and I've never been big on beauty pageants, but it's sort of a necessary part of it. But... When I got called, or San, uh, George San Jose called me uh, to say, hey, we've nominated you for this, I was so touched and honored. And to be selected by your peers, I thought was significantly different than, again, not to diminish, we also do the award winning, turning in those submissions. It was just more significant to me. You know, I started my career in, uh, the late 80s, and I look to those guys to learn. I, I look to the Orsis, I look to the San Jose groups. I used to read the you know, ad impact. You know, we didn't have Google back then, so you actually had to go and do the research <laughs> and read the magazines. I look to them to, to figure out, to, to research. How do you argue with your boss about why this is an important market? How do you discuss the size and the future and all of that? So when I got that call and that was mentioned to me, I was like, oh my God, the titans, truly the titans of marketing, 
think that the work that I have been doing in my brief time is, is worth you know, honoring. And, and I was very touched by that. Well, I know that uh, Chicago is an often thought of, thought of as one of the mm -hmm. um, leading areas for Hispanic marketers. Mm -hmm. But how about the, the demographics there? Yeah. Give us a little demographics on the Latino community. Oh. I mean, it's, the numbers are awesome. Um, Illinois is a high growth state, continues to be. You know, it, it, the Latino market nationwide, and I think one of the maps showed it, it's really reflective of, right, the California, the Texas. Illinois is a major one. Um, Chicago is really one of the largest sectors in us. It's not just Chicago anymore. Um, so we actually work regionally, and when you look at the demographics of Chicago, Hispanics are now the largest group. It used to be African Americans, but Hispanics are actually the largest group, the fastest group, also one of the youngest groups in the state. Um, Hispanics in the working through the Latino Policy Forum and the census, they are now actually the biggest labor force, and I think some of that we heard nationwide, so it's very reflective of what's happening in the, in the nation. But when we look at the average age in Chicago, we're looking, uh, and, and Illinois overall, and we're actually looking a little younger that was mentioned nationwide. It's about 26, 28 year olds. So we are beginning to see a lot of firsts, and we see a lot of companies, especially in our space, right? We work with healthcare, education, where they're saying, wait a minute, my enrollment numbers have been down. And we're like, well, because you're not advertising mm -hmm. to the group that's actually the largest group that's going to be going to college. So a big part of that has been very opportunistic in their work, particularly in the, uh, Illinois and in the region. Well, we can see why uh, Ruth is um, one of the recipients, and we're looking forward to working with you. Yep. Um, we're hoping that next year we can get you back here for one of our presenters so we can yeah. see some of the case studies and some of the dynamic work you're doing. And uh, again, welcome to the selection committee, because mm -hmm. we'll Thank be you. calling you next year with an idea of who do we who honor. Be next? Yeah. That's so, true. ladies and gentlemen, our recipient of the Hispanic Market Thank Achievement you. Award, Larissa Lopez. If, if I may, before we, we, yeah, sure. we do this, because I do think this is important, um, if you all can join me, because those who give the awards never get the awards, right? Because they create them, they uplift our community. They really ensure that this stays top of mind. So, Rick, I wanted to personally thank you for doing thank this. Thank you. Get a photo of you. Okay, well, another show, um, and um, Rico asked me, he said, how far are we going, Rick? Are we going into the 30s? I said, well, I don't know that. This, this, you know, this is our 28th year, and uh, you know, I'll tell you the truth, it's very real, and, and it's, it's important to know that. We, we never would have done any of these shows without the sponsors. This is a for-profit company, to be honest with you. This is not a community affairs, feel-good company. And, no, it's, it's, and we've been profitable since day one, and very profitable, if you will. Thank you. Because we, we have delivered by bringing the top talent, and the corporations appreciate that, and they're learning from it. They go back to the office in many, many instances all, over the, all these years. I've had people say, Rick, that's the reason we got into marketing, Hispanic, coming to your conference. So, we're going to be uh, continuing. And uh, another thing that we, we want to tell you right now is we uh, feel that we need to uplift Hispanic Heritage Month. It's, it's not, we need to really, really bring up the visibility of that month and what Hispanics have done for this country and here in Minnesota. So we are involved in that already, but uh, we, want to, we want to upgrade that. We want to get more corporations looking at love seek of the mile, but that's the beer and that's a couple of tacos, to be honest with you. That's a celebration. No, that's a celebration that was started by Coors Brewing 
and the Hispanic marketing, uh, uh, I think the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce of Denver. Cinco. Be honest with you. Cinco de Trinco. Yeah, it's Cinco de Trinco. <laughs> and, we, and we love it all. But Hispanic Heritage Month is something that we're going to really uh, look at. So again, thank you. Uh, we love the venue, Steve. A beautiful venue. Thank you. <laughs> SPNN. Uh, we're going to be uh, we're going to be on the air with this conference of at least a hundred times over the year through your network. Uh, it's, it's one o'clock in the morning, but we're all up. We'll, we'll watch it. And uh, thank our presenters, Ray Salea. Thank you uh, for putting the panel together. Ed, Ed from our National Guard. Thank you very much. Uh, all the presenters, our, our award winners, Alan and Larissa. Thank you. And. Um, we're looking forward to being back with you again in the fall for uh, our 21st anniversary of La Familia Hispanic Heritage Award. On behalf of all of us, God bless. Thank you.